When we measure speed on Earth, 100 miles per hour feels fast. A passenger jet traveling at 600 miles per hour feels like soaring. But none of that matters when you scale up to the size of the cosmos. Voyager 1, humanity's most distant explorer, was launched in 1977 and is now traveling at 38,000 miles per hour relative to the Sun. It has crossed into interstellar space, a boundary never reached by any other human-made object. A staggering achievement. And yet, if Voyager 1 were pointed directly at Proxima Centauri, it would still take more than 73,000 years to arrive. Think about that. 73,000 years ago, early humans were still painting on cave walls and sharing the planet with mammoths and saber-toothed cats. That's how unfathomably slow even our fastest probes are when viewed through the lens of interstellar distance. Let's raise the stakes. The Parker Solar Probe, currently holding the record for the fastest human-made object, reaches speeds of 430,000 pounds la tours by diving toward the sun and harnessing gravitational slingshot effects. It's moving so fast, it could circle Earth 17 times in one hour. But even at that blistering velocity, it would still take over 6,600 years to reach Proxima Centauri. That's nearly the entire length of recorded human history. These numbers expose the elephant in the room. Our technology is painfully slow for cosmic travel. Every spacecraft we've ever launched relies on chemical propulsion, burning fuel to create thrust. But there's a limit to how much fuel we can carry. The heavier the spacecraft, the more fuel you need just to move that fuel, creating a vicious, unsolvable loop. It's a paradox that engineers call the tyranny of the rocket equation. To break out of this trap, we need entirely new ways to think about propulsion. Ways that don't rely on lugging massive fuel tanks. Some of the boldest ideas come from the bleeding edge of physics. One possibility is the solar sail. A spacecraft that doesn't carry fuel at all, but instead uses pressure from sunlight or high-powered lasers to push it forward, much like a sailboat catching the wind. These sails are feather light and could, in theory, accelerate over time to a significant fraction of the speed of light. Another concept is ion propulsion, which uses electric fields to shoot charged particles out of the back of a ship. It provides only a tiny push, about the same as a piece of paper resting on your hand. But that force continues to build over months and years in the vacuum of space, where there's no friction to slow it down. Then there's the fusion drive, an engine powered by the same nuclear reaction that fuels the sun. If perfected, it could deliver speeds fast enough to reach Proxima Centauri in decades, not millennia. Even more extreme, the antimatter engine. When matter meets antimatter, it annihilates in a burst of pure energy, the most efficient energy conversion known to science. Just one gram of antimatter could power a starship halfway across the galaxy. The problem? Creating and storing antimatter safely is still far beyond our reach. Of course, there's the ultimate sci-fi dream, the warp drive. Instead of moving through space, it bends space itself, allowing a ship to ride a bubble through space-time. Mathematically, it's not entirely impossible. Equations like the Alcubierre metric suggest it's theoretically valid, but the energy required may be more than the mass of the observable universe. The challenge of propulsion is not just engineering, it's philosophy. It's about what kind of civilization we want to become. Are we content to remain bound to our pale blue dot? Or will we stretch our minds, science, and courage toward the stars? The answer lies in whether we're willing to take the first slow steps now, knowing full well that we may not live to see the destination, but someone else will. Because every generation that dares to try pushes humanity one light year closer to the stars. At infinity beyond, we believe this is not just a technological journey. It's a human one.